Thank you all, and I'm happy to participate in this first event that you're organizing here in Europe. So, so let's let's go for it. Uh, I will share a presentation. I will speak about three things about uh, a little bit about value and what's going on with value and what, what do I think about this. Uh, then I will I will uh, share some some ideas that we have uh, uh, large holdings for us that are growing companies. So I don't think there is a uh, a contradiction with being, being a value investor and investing in companies that, that grow definitely, <laughs> and then I will I will speak about a sector that is uh, very fashionable now. It's, it was not uh, some months ago, and, and uh, will we'll, uh, the typical value investing uh, uh, mm, sector. We'll see later. So we we all see what happened with value investing. In the, or, or, I mean, you, you, have, you have read so many so many graphs similar to this one so what happened ant until last year value versus growth uh, then you see what kind of start to happen uh, in last year i mean value started to perform that has come down a little, a little bit late lately and uh, uh, do we think that this is going to change well we definitely uh, think so <laughs> Um, uh, there's nothing, nothing that has changed uh, in the last years that uh, uh, make it different. Uh, uh, the idea that uh, everything uh, uh, reverts to the to the average, and when you are buying low prices stocks, uh, they will go up, and similarly, uh, high prices stocks tend to go down. Always has been like that, and nothing has changed. I mean, in, uh, so uh, in the last ten years, we see. We have seen that momentum of growth has been huge, but you know it's a self self fulfilling prophecy. When something is working, it keeps on working until it stops working. And uh, then we see that in 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 uh, the spread of past investment is investing. Oh, well, first thing, we um, I think that momentum will change when there is a turning point. That momentum will be to, the value investing will have a momentum on the, on the tailwind. As a tailwind, and 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 that would be a positive force for us. And then uh, the spread of passive investing. This is something I, we don't think is going to change. Definitely, I mean, it will be here, and, and it will be here forever, and probably it kept will keep on increasing. So it, it shouldn't affect much to our way of investing. Historically low interest rates. That's something we do think is going to change because uh, there is no way. That with all the money that has been uh, put into the system, uh, uh, this time is going to work. Not, Ten years ago, it didn't work because it was kept in, in the bank reserves. This year, this money roughly has been go has gone directly to the hands of the public. So uh, and that will in create inflation uh, definitely, and then interest rates will go up. Uh, there is no other way out of this, and uh, specifically with such huge uh, public deficits and uh, all over the world. Right. And then digitalization, okay, we had a very uh, particular situation last year in which precisely the stock that were kind of growth stock, momentum stocks were favored, but, uh, but well, the pandemic, right? So this is something that is, is already changed and, and probably will, will, well, will, will keep on growing the digitalization, but perhaps not as such uh, a, a, a rush pace that, the, the pace that we had last year, right? So, it looks like things are changing and, and changing in our favor. And then what can we expect? I mean, it, you know, the, the, these, these, these numbers, I mean, I took them from research affiliate work. And, you know, the, the, uh, if we move to percentile 95, <laughs> the relative return of value versus growth will be 37% extra return. If we move to percentile 50, if we revert to the, to the to the mean, the extra return will be seven six seventy six point eight. Funnily enough, in in two oh oh two thousand one and two thousand two, in those three years period, the outperformance of value versus growth was roughly eighty percent. So, and frankly, I do think that we are in a similar situation we were at the twenty years ago. I mean, it's so so familiar. So. That's what we expect. I mean, the, the relative return so far, so far in, in the in this year has been only nine percent. So we, I think, we have a, a long way ahead of us in which value will will outperform. 
Um, and, and, and you see, this is why Richard Senna uh, issued in the last uh, 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 quarterly report. So it, it, it's very interesting. When, when value starts outperforming, it outperforms for a long time in a big way. I mean, you can see here the average of value outperforming periods in the last uh, 40 years. You know, the value 213% return versus a 75% in the market. So 138% extra uh, alpha, let's say, and an average of 62 months. So uh, we think something, something similar uh, like this is going to happen in, in the next few years, let's say. So the good thing is that we are going to have the... the, the, the the win on in our backs, so hopefully we'll take advantage of that after so much suffering in the last years, right? So uh, I, I'm going to 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 um, go through a brief comment on our three main holdings because I mean people uh, complain that as we value investors, we all invest in low growth companies, uh, sometimes value traps and things like that. Well, let's see our three main holdings. Sorry about this. Uh, this is Golar LNG. They are involved in the LNG business, which is that is booming right now. And specifically, they, they are uh, uh, focused, or they will be focused in the FLNG business. So, trying to extract gas for standard fields all over the the world, all over the seas. So, with something which is quite promising these days, I guess. Uh, and, and you see the VDA in this company in the last five years, the evolution and what is expected in the next couple of years, well, the next three, four years. And you can see there that the green, the green is, is the, the uh, contract already in place uh, and the um, gray area is the, well, an assumption of possible contracts that they may get with new fields to be developed. So we are talking here about 400 million EBTA and dollars EBTA with secure contracts and, and the same size probably with options that they may have. So it can even be bigger than that. So this is a growing business. This is something that will be here for the next 30 years. And this is something that these guys have a unique position within it. So our second largest holding is a cheer, the, you know, the holding company in Italy. And this is its main asset, which is cost. It is uh, nursing homes in, and, and, and acute hospitals in, in no, no, um, um, rehabilitation hospitals, sorry, not acute hospitals, in, in, in Italy and in Germany. So this is the growth in ABDA in the last 15 years. Not bad. <laughs> I, I remember we invested with them uh, 15 years ago, and this was an in insignificant business for them. And now he, this is a, uh, has grown hugely in the last 15 years. So you can see here that they have some bumps in, 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 in this in last year and this year, obviously, because of the pandemic. But then they, are, they will recover and they will keep on growing because this is a growing business, as you, we all know. But I mean, nursing homes are growing everywhere, and you know, specifically in Europe. And they are very well positioned for that. So and remember, this is a company that you are mainly we are getting cost for free because they have a huge amount of cash and some other businesses. So, so that's in in a nutshell, that's what value investing is. I mean, buying growth businesses as, as, as a, yeah, with a huge discount and and something that everyone agrees that is growing can grow. It will be growing. There's no doubt how the thing is going to look like in ten years, and 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 we will be participating on that growth but at very, very reasonable price. And the third holding is Dixon Scarfone. Now it's called Carries. And this is the, the uh, core business for, for Dixon. It is true that they, have a, they had a telco business that has suffered because several reasons that um, uh, uh, well, we are not going to stand on, the, uh, stand on this. But this is the main business, the electrical distribution business, uh, and, and the growth that this business has had in the last, uh, 10 years, which is quite significant, I would say. And obviously, there is all the chances in the world that this growth will be um, going uh, for the next 10 years also because, you know, appliances and electronics is, all, is, some, is, is so, so much part of our life now that the growth will be there. So this is, I mean, this is not um, some uh, stocks that we, I just picked to show that we are growing. I mean, these are... Uh, our three main holdings. I mean, and 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 we consider ourselves value investors. But I mean, the business that we 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 like are businesses that grow. Is is better that, that you grow or that you grow, obviously. 
the funny thing is that the average of this, I mean, Dixon's is trading at seven times free cash flow. And, and, and you, when you see Best Buy in the USA trading at double the multiple, would you see that is a value opportunity here? I mean, why Dixon's that is leading in, in six countries in Europe, specifically uh, also in, in Greece, which are close to 30% market shares? Uh, why this company is, has to trade at half the multiple that Best Buy in the US? I mean, there's not a, a no brainer situation for us. So growth is there. Which is one of the main complaints of some people from of, from some people lately about value investors, and 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 we can take advantage of that at very reasonable prices, right? So and and the last thing I, I wanted to comment today is in a, um, a value idea, which is oil. Now, oil for us is something like fifteen percent of the portfolio. We have increasing increasing our positions uh, all over this year, and uh, why? I mean. In a nutshell, I mean, this is a, uh, obviously it's a commodity business, uh, which is fine. I mean, why, why not invest in commodity business? Of course, I mean, if there is good value there sometimes. And it, it is a typical situation that, that where there has been a, a, a huge imbalance between demand and supply. And, and, and almost, I wouldn't say no capital has gone into the, the business, but very limited amount of capital for what is required have been put into this business. And we as value investors, we should be putting capital when, when, when no one wants to put capital. So that was when, when and where you obtain good returns. So let's have an overlook of how the sector looks like today. Uh, as you can see here, demand is already coming back to the pre-pandemic levels. I mean, roughly close to 100 million barrels per day and supply is there, but, but it, 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 um, there is no much spare capacity today in the world. So uh, basically, we are in a situation in which demand has surprised positively and at all accounts in, in, in the world. I mean, last year we had comments of the demand destroy and all that, and it hasn't happened, and it looks like it won't happen, at least in the last 10 to 15 years. I was, well, let's keep on going. You can see here how inventories have come down significantly this year. When inventories, inventories come down, means that, that supply is not enough to cover demand. So it is true that the OPEC is, 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 is limiting the, the supply, but not by a huge factor anymore. I mean, perhaps there is ca spare capacity, something like four or five million, no more than that at this stage. So this is the current situation in terms of stability. And here we can see the long-term uh, view. Um, and I think there is a, um, quite an agreement on, on what is going to happen here. Uh, renewables are going to go up, but we will need for a long time both oil and natural gas. Uh, natural gas is, is going to keep on growing in big time. It, it, it will substitute uh, for coal, definitely, and, but oil will be there also, specifically in, in petrochemicals and all, all what do we need. So this is, and this is quite, a, a, there is quite an agreement in most of the agencies about this, this, uh, this uh, evolution, future evolution, as far as we can say, right? And it's, it's funny what we can see now. I, that's, that, that's a graph that was, uh, was for, for Ben State, uh, and, or Morgan Stanley, sorry, uh, that came out a uh, few weeks ago. And this is a Norway uh, oil consumption taking into account that uh, in August already, 72% of, of the cars sold in, in Norway were EV cars. So uh, you can see there that despite the fact that the growth has, has, has been massive in terms of electric vehicles in Norway, you see that the oil demand has even increased a little bit. I mean, it hasn't fallen and has increased a little bit. And this is the country which is most advanced in terms of, of uh, EV uh, introduction into the market. So and what's going on here? Obviously, I mean that the oil, you, you need oil, we need oil for so many things that we can see these days, what, what's going on in China, what's going on in everywhere with gas. You know, these fossil fuels, we need them for so many things that we don't realize how dependent are, uh, dependent are, are we on, on them, right? So... All the front pages about EVs, okay, this is fine, but this is less than 10% of consumption and will be slowly coming down, very, very slowly, because, I mean, the bulk of the, of the, 
of the fleet still is uh, combustion engine uh, power, right? So we see that demand is going to be there for some time and, 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 and even grow. Probably in the next 10 to 15 years. Just, uh, yesterday I was reading an article about India and how India is growing. I mean, you know, people forget that I mean, <laughs> India is 1.3 billion people. Still, only they sell 4 million cars per year. They will be selling 10 to 15 million cars per year or, or even 20, 25 million cars per year as, as China does. And regrettably or not, I mean, the thing is that they won't be able to pay for EVs. And so we will, most of the cars they will be selling in the next 10 years will be combustion engine, engine cars. And also they have huge plans for petrochemicals and for everything they, that they need to develop the country. So same thing I watched this week uh, for three days in Ghana, in Africa, and same thing. And they just want <laughs> more products that need, need uh, petrochemicals, that need uh, gas, that need everything. So, so we always say to be very Norway centric, have a Norway centric vision of the world, and we should have a global vision of the world, which makes sense, probably. So let's go to supply. As you all know, the declining, as you see on the right, on the, on the right of the fields, is very large sometimes. You know, in the shale, we are talking 25% declines in the fields, in some other places, 5 to 10%. So every day, every, day, every year, we have declining. Uh, supply that we have to cover, and and the funny thing is that uh, there hasn't been much invest much investment to to cover that supply. Right? You can see here how the capex ha has evolved, which is a black line, which ha has really collapsed in the last uh, years. Uh, probably half half the, the the amount that uh, the sector was investing two three years ago. And with current investment, there is no way we can mm, 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 uh, uh, produce the barrels that we need uh, to cover the demand. So, and, and the gap between the price of the oil and, 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 the, and, and the barrels that, that, um, or the investment that we are doing is, is becoming very, very large. You know? you know, there have been several factors for that. Um, uh, but mainly, I mean, the, 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 in the last two three years, the ESG pressure has been very has been, has been very high, and it seems that uh, companies, especially big companies, uh, which tend to be, you know, led by by people, uh, which uh, I would I would call as, as Warren Buffett said, uh, they behave. Uh, looking at the um, uh, institutional imperative, I mean, they, they try to copy all of them to be on the safe, um, on the safe uh, um, side of the of the um, strategic position. And if uh, everyone says that we should invest in in production, we should invest in production. That's it. So, so they don't think too much. Uh, um, what 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 do I think is going to happen? Well. Uh, <laughs> capex will return. The, the boards of the large companies will see that the, the uh, medium-sized companies uh, will will be making huge amounts of free cash flow. Uh, people will start to complain that we need security of supply, that we need you to invest, and 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 people will change their minds at least for the next ten years because we do need these barriers. So um, the fact the fact is that. Meanwhile, it happens, uh, there will be a, a very tight market in which, uh, because this all take time, as you will know, I mean, it's not a one, two year thing. I mean, to, to develop a big gas field, you need four years, five years. So it's, a, it's something that will take time. And meanwhile, we will need, uh, we will have a, a very tight market. And also, I mean, what, what uh, we have been uh, seeing is that Meanwhile, the Brent price has been, well, oil prices in general has been up and recovered to pre-pandemic levels. A lot of shares in the sector still are uh, have been left behind because probably the ESG factor and and and, and but perhaps uh, uh, some other things. But then probably the main thing has been the uh, the ESG factor, meaning that uh, you know the the energy sector weighting is uh, at very very low low levels, right? So with, with there is an opportunity, a very clear opportunity. I mean, last time we invested uh, that that big in, in oil was 20 years ago, 
when oil was trading at 20, 25, it even went down to, to $10 per barrel at some st- some, uh, at some moment, I think at the end of 1999. And now the oil price is, is, is a traditional price. And we, what we see is that companies are making very nice price to cash flow and the market is not recognizing that. So, uh, what we have done is to invest in the sector, and we have we have done some. We, we haven't invested in 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 the big uh, companies, especially. Well, you know, we are based in Europe, and uh, the first thing we sh- one should be look at would be the large uh, integrated businesses. We are prefer to to invest in medium sized uh, family owned companies, or, or or with a capital allocation and a way of do, doing things that. Uh, make us much more comfortable than than the big, uh, large, uh, a bit a bit too bureaucratic and and, and led by uh, institutional imperative uh, companies, right? So we have we have bought a, a bunch of uh, six seven companies, the small sizes. You have the names uh, below, and we have created a, a synthetic <laughs> uh, company which produce will be producing two hundred. 80,000 barrels per day in 2024 with an billion EBITDA in 2024 and, uh, and a significant free cash flow. And uh, uh, well, we will be paying something like uh, uh, 3.6 price per barrel. Uh, the market cap of this synthetic company is something like 55 billion and, and at a very reasonable uh, uh, price within the value of this should be double that. I mean, yes, as a starting point. Uh, all, all our numbers, by the way, in terms of, of uh, uh, BDA, expected BDA, free cash flow, et cetera, are based on $60 brand barrel, which is a, what we think is a, is a price that can uh, is sustainable for the next 15 years. I mean, lower than that, probably, uh, uh, barrels will go, uh, and capital will go out of the market and... If the price is sustained for a long time at 70, 75, 80, probably um, uh, significant invest- investment will be made in the sector. And, and then within 60 is, a, is an inter- um, a, a reasonable price. So at that price, if we are paying something something like three times uh, price earnings, uh, three times free cash flow, as we mentioned here, with limited amount on, of debt in this company. So we do think this is a very, very interesting opportunity at this stage. So, I, we think uh, the change in value uh, towards value it's it's, it's a, a change for good. I mean, and, and, and persistent and and, and and durable. So it will be uh, a long process. Uh, we think uh, we can find growth companies at the value price definitely. I mean, we we, we do find them, um, and specifically, uh, perhaps it's not a. Uh, very big growth se- sector, but oil oil sector, especially production and exploration, uh, we think it's a classic value opportunity in, in a sector that hasn't got any capital in the last uh, three four years, uh, and uh, or, or, or or the required capital in the last year. So there will be a, a, a very tight market uh, for the foreseeable future, I would say. And last thing, as I always say, say and, and, and this is a, a, a good moment to recall that. And, and the, main, the main thing that I say in the book that I wrote five years ago, and it hasn't changed much, much. And, and because of, I mean, always, and specifically today, because of what is happening with uh, money creation and the inflation that is generating, uh, own assets and don't be a creditor. I mean, don't, don't have bank deposits, don't, don't loan to anyone, uh, especially if you're on a long term, and own assets, which is the only way to, to be protected from the huge distortions that the money creation is, is creating. So that's all what I wanted to say. <laughs> <laughs>